Good morning, friends, and welcome back. Let me show you how I turned this into this. And I am in my 60s. This belonged to my grandmother when she was younger. So it is probably an antique, but as we know, not all old things, not all antiques are worth something, but sentimentally they are. So I wanted to refinish this. And I finally, after having had this in my possession for about 20 years, I finally sanded it all down. And I am so excited because I love the way it came out. I got a lot of work to do on the inside, but let me show you how I got this outside done. And I want you to see the really rich, deep glass-like gloss that I have on the top of this. I'm also going to put a link down below because this may not be the right top coat to use if you are going to be putting hot things on this. Like if you want to do this process on a table, there's a video below that tells you which top coat you should use. So it's one of those rare, low humidity, beautiful summer days. And I'm going to be using the Decal Art Chalky Finish colored, uh, it's called Whisper, which is just a little bit of an off-white color to match the bedroom upstairs. That's the color of the trim up there. And I'm going to paint this just like you would paint a wall. Some people like to use those chalk paint brushes, but for me, I find I prefer a much smoother finish. So I may need two coats on this. You can see this looks like some very knotty pine. And I'll use a fine brush uh, for those areas like the corners and around the hinges. So I'm just going to paint this whole thing and let it dry. And when you're working on any old piece or new piece of kind of messed up furniture, if it's got scratches or chips or whatever in it, chalk paint almost works like a little bit of a filler in there. Acrylic paint, I'm not so crazy about on furniture, but the chalk paint leaves a very matte, flat, velvety finish. This way, if you want to add a gloss over it, you can. I prefer for this to just be a nice, flat, matte finish. And the top part is where I'm going to put that very heavy gloss. So I'm just going to finish painting this and allow it to dry. Now I'm back inside. I've got some Downton Abbey on in the background. This chalk paint has dried and I'm going to take my matte finish decoupage glue. I have a couple of containers here, so I'm gonna let this one empty out. That's just about all done. But I'm going to add decoupage glue over the whole surface of this. And I'm going to use a bristle brush because I want this decoupage glue to get into every single crevice, everything uh, that doesn't feel so smooth on here. I'm going to put two coats on and I'm going to go in one direction first and let it dry and then I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So this is the first coat, it's going to go from left to right and then on the second coat top to bottom. The reason that I am doing this is because we're going to iron our napkins on and if you miss any spots or if you've got too light of a coat of decoupage glue on, what's going to happen is your napkins are going to either wrinkle or tear or bubble up when you get to the next step. So this way you're going to be very, very thorough and you will have decoupage glue over the whole surface. So don't skip this step, okay? Now you want to find a patterned patterned napkin that works really well together when you put it side by side like this. You could use a Baroque napkin over top of this or something like this, which when you open it up, it to me it makes a very pleasing pattern. It almost looks like tiles. So I have taken the whole napkin, several of them, and what I've done is I've separated that top piece of the napkin from the other two layers 
and I'm just planning it out right now. I want to see how these napkins fit on here. Obviously, the decoupage glue is already dry. And once I'm happy with the way this napkin is beginning to look, the way I've placed it, I'm now going to, and I mean, I was very, very careful with this. So I lined up the first napkin. I'm doing this in real time just so you can see that I was very, very careful. I don't want this to be crooked. I want this all to flow into a nice pattern. So once I was happy with the placement of my napkin, I took my parchment paper and I placed it over the napkin, just the first one, and I have the iron set to linen, which I believe is the highest setting on here, and no steam. You cannot skip the part where you use this parchment paper because you will burn and brown your napkins, not to an attractive color, because you may be thinking, oh, that might look neat. It, it really doesn't. They look burnt. Uh, it ruins the color. It's not good. So you want to make sure you very carefully and thoroughly iron the napkin down. Now, when you pull the parchment paper away, you can run your hand over the napkin just to see how it feels. Make sure that you got those edges down because when we go back in and put another coat of decoupage glue over this. If you don't have these pieces thoroughly ironed down, that's where you're going to get bubbles and wrinkles and things like that. So I'm going to do each napkin piece one at a time, go right across the edge until I'm all finished. And I repeated the same thing across the top, but what I'll do is when I'm all done, I'm going to file away that excess. Now that I'm done ironing everything down with the parchment paper, you, the bright light is kind of washing this out a little bit, but I wanted you to see how it kind of, it, to me, it very much looks like tiles going along the surface of this. So now what I'm going to do, or what we'll do, is we will add the next coat of decoupage glue on here. I did go along the edge where the excess napkin was and I just filed away all of that excess. A nail file works beautifully for this and you want to try to file in one direction only which is down so that you're not pulling any of the decoupage glue up. Okay now we want to put the napkin decoupage glue over this. If you cannot find this napkin decoupage glue because every time I list it, it sells out or it is already sold out and I cannot find it in the stores, I'll put a link down below for a matte medium and you want to use three parts matte medium to one part of distilled water. You want to make sure it's distilled because both tap water and spring water have acids in them that can turn your projects this dingy, ugly yellow over time. You don't want to do that. So I will put the link down below for that matte medium that you can use if you don't have the napkin decoupage glue and you do need the lighter decoupage glue because if you have missed any parts on this surface, and this was even nerve wracking for me, I've done this for years, but I was worried that I maybe missed a spot and was going to tear the napkin. If you missed any tiny spots and you're using the napkin decoupage glue or the matte medium with water as your decoupage glue, it's light enough that it's not going to cause a problem. You will just, in essence, kind of re-decoupage your napkin down and avoid some of the problems. I am now going to let this dry for a couple of hours. I want it to be thoroughly dry before I go on to the next step. Now everything has thoroughly dried. You can see it's got a nice matte finish again. And I am going to take some resin. This is a two-part resin. Now, so you're aware, you have to use a special mask for the resin. You can't see it, but these invisible fumes come up and you want to be in a well-ventilated room. I've got the window open and a fan on and I'm actually using this digital scale because if you don't get the two parts of the resin 
measured exactly correctly, you will have a big sticky bubbly mess on your hands. If you do not want to use resin, Triple Thick Glaze provides the very next best option. However, this dries to a glass finish. If you are at all comfortable with using resin, I would suggest you go ahead and use the resin to get this glass-like finish that I produced. I accidentally had a little bit of glitter in the bottom of this, which just happened to look beautiful. I'm going to move the resin all over this piece. When I'm done moving the resin, and by the way, there are resin calculators online. You can simply Google resin calculators, and it asks you what the dimensions are, the height, the width of your piece, and then it tells you how much resin you need to use. And of course, you want specific cups, measuring cups, what have you, to work with resin because you cannot use those items for anything else once you're done using resin. It is one of the stickiest mediums before it's cured or dried. And it also dries rock hard. <laughs> so I'm going to finish coating this whole top piece. And you want to do that in very bright light so that you can see if you missed any spots. The resin is very thick and what I'm doing now is I am taking a torch. You can see the flame coming out of that. It's very mild flame. You want to move it quickly over the whole piece because there are thousands of air bubbles underneath the resin and you want to make sure those come to the surface and pop and that's what this torch is doing. You have about 30 minutes worth of time to pour the resin, move it around, work with it before it starts to harden. Definitely want to make sure you're wearing gloves along with your face protection or your breathing apparatus. And you want to make sure you've got at least a 3 ml plastic underneath your resin. Once this dries, it is not coming off. There are tricks to get it out of your hair, which you'll want to do immediately. <laughs> but uh, if you're not familiar with resin, just go on to any one of the other choices of top coats that you'll see in the video link below. Just find the one that works best for you. And if you do decide to work with resin, you have to give it the uh, whole overnight and some of the next day to totally cure. And because resin can be a little pricey, you do want to make sure that you try this out on a smaller item, a small piece first, maybe a box, a box top, something that you won't mind ruining just in case you don't get it right. So let me just show you a still shot of this in some decent light. You see, this is really the actual color. Depending on which light you're in, you're going to get different colors. But that is a light overhead. You can see the high, high gloss on this, how rich the depth of this top coat is. There's a tiny bit of glitter in there. And here's a bit of a shot of this in the daylight. And I placed the surface back over the chest. It's not screwed in yet. I'm going to ask for help from my husband on that. But uh, in a different light, you can see the gloss off of a light, how rich this top coat is. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, guys, I know we sound like a broken record, but it really helps us over here. And thank you for sharing the videos. The link right below the video that says share, then you just click on it. It gives you the link and you can put it on Facebook, Pinterest, whatever site you put it on. As long as you give me credit, it's a huge help to me. And thank you for that. At the end of the video, you'll see a box where it allows you to subscribe. Quite simply, you just click on the icon that looks like scissors with an oval in the center. I have an ebook called Successful Decoupage Every Time. The links for that will be down below along with a free link to turn your smartphone or iPad into a Kindle. That's my video for this week. Sandra, I hope you had a lovely cup of coffee while you watched this. And so many of you comment and I love that. I read all of your comments even though I can't get back to everyone. I also have a page on Facebook called Upcycle with Decoupage. So if you go over to Facebook and like 
and follow Upcycle with Decoupage. Facebook will let you know every time I put a brand new video out. Okay, guys, I will see you next week or the week after. Hope you're enjoying the summer and you're all safe and healthy out there. See you next week or the week after. Bye-bye.